Sunday morning. Does anyone have announcements? Yes, Ross. Uh, just a reminder, we have our regularly scheduled uh, council meeting this Wednesday evening at six o'clock. Sally, did you have something? Lindsay's uh, grandmother passed away at midnight. Um, they said she passed away peacefully. Um, but uh, please keep Lindsay and, and the family in, in your prayers. Other announcements this morning? All right. If there are no other announcements, then let us just take a, a moment to quiet ourselves center ourselves and open our hearts to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace from Jesus Christ, our Lord. Join me in the call to worship. Christ is risen and greets us with peace. The peace of Christ is among us indeed. We are witnesses of God's glory and steadfast love. The transforming love of Christ is among us indeed. Come, let us worship. Let us lift our hearts together in our living prayer. God of love and light, we come as witnesses of your glory and faithfulness, amazed to discover your transformative love. God, we desire for you to abide within us and for your grace to be revealed anew daily. Be with us and awaken within us the call to love one another 
and the way was made real through Jesus the Christ. Amen. And now we'll listen to our hymn of praise when morning gilds the sky. Uh, 86. We often act in destructive and hateful ways. We close our hearts to God and disobey God's law. Together, let us confess our sin. Ever present God, forgive us when we stand in disbelief and comfort us when our fears outweigh your peace. God, forgive us when we become too busy to pray. Help us when we fail to see our neighbors in need. Abiding God, Forgive us when we are overwhelmed with bad news and shut down completely. In these times, remind us that we are called to be your love, love live, your faithful witness, and your humble servants. Help us to wake up to the work of love and to your renewing strength each day, we pray. Amen. Oh God, hear our prayers of repentance and forgiveness and awaken us from doubt disbelief and distress by transforming us into your resurrection joy. God, we desire for your loving spirit to be among us, to comfort us in our fears, and to renew our faith. Amen. And now we'll have the reading of our Holy Scriptures. Our first reading is from Acts 3, verses 12 through 19. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety, we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, 
His name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did all your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Our second reading is Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after the lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. In peace, I will lie down and sleep for you alone, O Lord. Make me rest secure. The third reading is 1 John 3, 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. Our gospel lesson this morning is found in the gospel according to Luke from chapter 24 verses 36b through 48. Listen for the word of God. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. 
For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of royal fish. And he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah suffered to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. We got our blessing to this reading from God's holy word. So this third Sunday of Easter finds us again with the disciples and Jesus appears. Very similar to last week's gospel from John, where we had the Doubting Thomas version. These first few weeks of Easter, our lectionary is emphasizing Jesus' divinity as well as Jesus' humanity, and thus demonstrating that indeed what Jesus said and taught was true. The scriptures have been fulfilled. God keeps God's promises. There are all kinds of emotions and feelings coursing through that room. At least I would imagine that there are. The room where the disciples are hiding out must be filled with fear, anxiety, grief, uncertainty, the unknown. What will lie ahead for them? And probably also thoughts about what had just happened, what they had just witnessed. And then Jesus appears and says, peace be with you. Always, Jesus is bringing peace. The first words that he says upon entering a room, a room that's filled with, with disciples that are startled and terrified, he says, peace be with you. He's basically saying, don't worry. Everything's all right. I'm here. You don't have to be worried or afraid or anxious anymore because I have come to bring you peace. But Jesus does realize that they are frightened. After all, they think they have seen a ghost. I mean, wouldn't you think that you've seen a ghost if all of a sudden someone that you watch die shows up in your room? I don't know if a dead person has ever showed up in your room, but if a dead person has, I would guess it's a ghost. <clears throat> but again, Jesus reassures them. He says, you have doubts. So here, look at my hands and my feet. Go ahead and touch me. Ghosts do not have flesh and bones, but Touch me, you'll see that I am a flesh. And maybe to drive the point further home, he basically says, and I'm hungry. What do you have for me to eat? And they gave him some royal fish, and he ate it in their presence. And after he eats, he says this to them. These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And the disciples did just that. 
they went out and they proclaimed that Jesus is the Messiah to the whole world. And this proclamation that began with those disciples long ago has been passed down from generation to generation to generation, all the way to where we are here now in 2021. Because we too are Christ's disciples. And we too are called to proclaim, to proclaim that Jesus is the Messiah to all the nations. We are witnesses of these things. Just like those disciples were witnesses so long ago. Just that we are witnesses of the things that Jesus did through the Holy Scriptures. We are witnesses through the prophets, both prophets of old and prophets of today. We are witnesses to our teachers, teachers of old and teachers of today. And we are witnesses through our own ministries. We are witnesses through our own encounters with the risen Christ. And like the disciples in our scriptures from today and last week, Often we too are startled, terrified, frightened. We too so often are faced with our own doubts. So much has been going on in our world, especially this past year. So much violence, so much anger, mistrust, fear. Many people are wondering just where is God? Where is Christ in all of this? We long to have Christ show up and say to us, peace be with you, to calm our nerves, to sit down and have a meal with us, to tell us not to worry because I am with you. But as Christ's disciples, that is our role. That is what Christ has called us to do. Just like Christ opened the minds of the disciples so long ago, we need to open our minds to receive what Christ is revealing to us. Because we are now the body of Christ, and so we are to do, we are to do Christ's work. And so when we encounter people in situations that are filled with anxiety and fear, people who doubt that any good can or will ever come about in this world of ours, we need to step in with the peace of Christ. We need to say in those situations, peace be with you. We need to share the love of Christ to alleviate anxieties and fears, to cast aside doubts, to reassure people that although things may be difficult now, that we are never alone, that Christ is with us always to lead and to guide us, to see us through however long that dark tunnel may be into the light of day into the light of Christ. First John says, See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Today's lesson from First John is all about identity. It's about image and our personhood. It's about being who we truly are. Our identity, our true personhood, all begins with God. God's love, God's grace has made us who we are. And so John says, see what the Father has given, has given us, that we are called children of God. For John then, there is no greater status 
No greater identity than being called a child of God. We are named God's children by God's love and grace. As the author of 1 John goes on to explain, our identity as Christ's disciples is inseparable from how we are to live as Christians. So during this Easter season, may we be reminded of the greatest gift that God has given to us, his son, Jesus Christ. And as children of God, may we live a life worthy of being called God's children. May we be messengers of God's peace and love. May we proclaim Christ's teaching to all the world. And if ever we are discouraged, afraid, doubtful, may we remember the words of the psalmist that says, many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. In peace, I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O, o Lord, make me rest secure. May you rest secure in the peace and love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God, thank you for calling us your children. Thank you for sending your son to us to show us how to live and to bring us new life and everlasting life. We pray that our hearts and our spirits and our whole beings can be open to receive whatever you reveal to us. And may we take those revelations and may we go out into your world and may we bring your peace and your love to all who we meet. For Christ's sake, amen. As we prepare for offering, remind you our offering plate is in the back. If you have an offering and are able, we ask you to leave it at the end of our service. God invites us to bring the fullness of who we are into worship and to share the fullness of who we are with the world. So it is God's holy invitation that asks us to pause and wonder what we want to offer of ourselves to the world. Time, presence, kindness, financial support, prayers. In these moments of quiet and reflection, what is it that you have to offer this day to bring God's peace on earth?
Let us lift our hearts together in our intercessory prayers of the people. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer it in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Creating God, like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Are there others that you would like to lift up in prayer this morning? Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all those on our prayer list. All those who long to be with us but are unable for whatever reason, we pray for the lonely, those who are hungry, those without a home, those who have pains and longings and sufferings that we cannot even imagine. We ask that you hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. Assure us of the peace you have promised, that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now together, let us pray the prayer that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of prayer. Amen. And now we'll listen to our closing hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
us go forth having had laid down our burdens. Let us go forth rich in spirit, knowing God has a plan for our lives. And let us go forth as witnesses to God's hope of justice, peace, grace, and love, believing fully that Christ is among all humanity now and always. Amen. May the peace of God which so surpass all of our understanding be with you both now and always. Amen. Amen.